In this lesson, you will learn about the federal income tax formula for C corporations. But first, let's review something more familiar to you, the individual income tax formula, so that you can understand some of the similarities and differences between the two tax structures. The formula we will discuss reflects recent tax law changes. In federal taxation, the concept of income is very broadly conceived, with some courts defining income as any increase in wealth. However, for several reasons, Congress excludes or defers some types of income from taxation, such as municipal bond interest, child support payments, and life insurance proceeds. Thus, Code Section 61A states that, except as otherwise stated in this subtitle, gross income means all income from whatever source derived. In other words, gross income includes everything unless the code explicitly indicates otherwise. Deductions, which are similar to expenses, reduce a taxpayer's gross income. In contrast to the all-inclusive concept of income, deductions follow an all-exclusive concept. That is, no deductions are generally permitted unless explicitly authorized by legislative grace in the code. For individuals, there are two categories of deductions. Deductions for adjusted gross income and deductions from adjusted gross income. Deductions for adjusted gross income, or AGI as it is known, are often related to business activities and certain investments. AGI is important because it is used in many other tax-related calculations. Okay. Deductions, which are similar to expenses, reduce a taxpayer's gross income. In contrast to the all-inclusive concept of income, deductions fall an all-exclusive concept. That is, no deductions are permitted unless explicitly authorized by legislative grace in the code. Deductions from AGI tend to be more personal in nature. Before 2018, from AGI deductions included itemized deductions or the standard deduction, whichever was greater, and personal and dependency exemptions. As of 2018, however, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act added a new from AGI deduction that largely equates to 20% of a taxpayer's qualified business income and eliminated personal and dependency exemptions altogether. Note that the 20% qualified business income deduction is not an itemized deduction. Thus, it does not influence whether itemized deductions are greater or less than the standard deduction. The difference between gross income and allowed deductions is taxable income, the tax base for determining individual federal income tax. Individuals calculate their income tax liability by using the applicable tax rate based on their filing status and taxable income. Tax credits, which unlike deductions, directly reduce taxes payable, and prepayments of tax are then applied to arrive at the net amount due or refunded. Let's now compare the individual and corporate income tax formulas. You can easily see that the overall structure of the two formulas is quite similar. For instance, both formulas begin with the all-inclusive concept of income under Code Section 61A. Each formula then applies deductions to arrive at taxable income, which is then used to determine tax liability. From there, tax credits and prepayments are applied to compute the net amount due or refunded. At a more detailed level, however, there are obvious differences in the types of deductions. In contrast to individuals, corporations do not compute AGI. Itemized deductions receive a standard deduction or consider the deduction for qualified business income. Instead, as legal entities separate from their owners, Corporations deduct ordinary and necessary business expenses under Code Section 162. If qualified, they also receive deductions for net operating losses, or NOLs, and dividends received from other corporations. You will learn about the dividends received deduction later. There are other similarities and differences between the two tax structures that are not obvious from comparing the tax formulas. Let's briefly discuss several of the more prominent issues concerning accounting periods and methods, charitable contributions, property transactions, capital losses, NOLs, tax rates, and tax credits. Accounting periods help frame the measurement of taxable income and define when items of income and deduction are recognized. For tax purposes, most corporations can choose either a calendar or fiscal year, whereas individuals typically must use a calendar year end. The method of accounting determines when and how income and deductions are recognized. However, unlike individuals, corporations are generally required to use the accrual method of accounting unless certain exceptions are met. For example, for tax years beginning after 2017, corporations with average gross receipts of $25 million or less for the most recent three-year period can adopt the cash method of accounting. Both individuals and corporations can deduct qualified charitable contributions. The corporate deduction is capped at 10% of taxable income, 
computed without regard to a variety of special deductions. Individuals, however, are currently limited to 60% of AGI for cash contributions and 30% of AGI for certain capital gain property. Corporations generally deduct charitable contributions according to their accounting method, while individuals deduct them when paid. In general, gains and losses from property transactions for individuals and corporations are taxed in the same manner. This is largely because the rules governing such transactions make little distinction between different types of taxpayers. One notable exception, though, is the depreciation recapture provisions under Code Sections 291 and 1250, which impose more depreciation recapture on corporations than individuals. You will learn more about this in later modules. Corporations cannot use capital losses to offset ordinary income. However, they can carry capital losses back three years and forward five years to offset capital gains in those years. Individuals can deduct up to $3,000 of net capital losses against ordinary income, with any excess losses carrying forward indefinitely. Similar to individuals, for tax years beginning after 2017, a corporation can generally carry a net operating loss forward indefinitely to offset taxable income in those years. The deduction for any NOL carryover year is limited to 80% of taxable income, determined without regard for the NOL deduction, for both individuals and corporations. Note that prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, a corporation could carry an NOL back two years and forward 20 years, and there was no taxable income limitation on the deductibility of the carryovers. Although individuals make several adjustments when computing NOLs, a corporation typically computes the excess of deductions over income. Individuals and corporations are subject to several different tax rates. For example, in 2018, the tax rate on ordinary income for individuals ranges from 10% to 37%, while the corporate tax rate for all income levels is a flat 21%. Note, however, that before 2018, that is prior to the enactment of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the tax rate on ordinary income for individuals was as high as 39.6%, while the corporate tax rate ranged from 15% to effectively 35%. In other words, the 21% flat tax rate for corporations is fairly different. As in the prior years, capital gains tax rates for non-corporate taxpayers are 0%, 15%, 20%, 25%, 25%, or 28%, depending on tax bracket and type of property involved. In some cases, a net investment income tax of 3.8% applies to certain high-income individuals. For corporations, however, capital gains are taxed at ordinary income tax rates. In other words, there is no preferential corporate tax rate for capital gains. Finally, some of the tax credits available to individual taxpayers, such as the foreign tax credit, can also be claimed by corporate taxpayers. However, other credits, such as the dependent care credit and earned income tax credit, are not applicable to business entities. Overall, you should now understand the general structure of the corporate tax formula and how it compares to the formula for individuals. The remaining lessons in this module will focus on more specific features of the federal corporate income tax.